Hey, welcome to Sober Not Sane. I'm your host, Jeb Fink. Uh, you know what? Before we get rolling with our guests, thank Liz from the camera store. She helps us with the equipment here. That's really kind of her. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Watch and listen on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcast. And uh, my guest right now, where, whatever time you're watching it, this morning, tonight, this afternoon, or because he can't sleep, Andrew Schultz, who... Uh, is an old friend of mine, and uh, you've been on the air since you were 11 years old. Love, yeah, absolutely. 11 <laughs> and a half. It's funny. I'm, I'm just so happy to be here, Jeb, because I was pretty sure this was an intervention. I was expecting my family and friends and former co-workers to be here. Now I can breathe. This I would, you know what? I would never do that to anybody, <laughs> and somebody sure as hell should have done it to me. But, uh, you know, you watch that show, and you can uh, – Do you, have you ever watched of Intervention? I have. So you watch it, and you look, and you go – Oh, uh, this one's a runner. <laughs> you know, you know which one's just going to head out. And it's so funny because you can't force anybody to get sober. Like, you either get sober or you don't. And uh, you know what? For all the years that I've known you, it's not like you don't drink or anything. But when you go out, you have a good time. But, you know, then well, when I it's to you, time to not drink. I said to you, sober, not sane. I, I, I like I like my beer. I, more more than anything, light beer now that I'm getting on an age and, you know, trying to keep up with the kids. But Slowing down. I, I do love the title, and I'm happy to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, no, it's great. So we started working together. The You were already working for uh, Pyramid Productions. Yeah. And uh, then they hired me because uh, Larry had to, you know, I don't know what he was thinking. There's a quota. He's, he need, need, need more funny. That's what it more was. More funny. He was a guy. He was, it was 1994 or 1995, and our office. Really? Is, oh yeah. I, I started there in April of 1994. I'm unclear whether or not it was late that fall, or into '95. Larry said, and uh, you know, he consulted me because I was about 22, 23. No, he didn't consult. And me. you knew everything about the industry. Oh, you know it. You, <laughs> you walked in. Your hair was down to the middle of your back. I swear. Straight up teased, uh, Diet Coke in each hand. You had a buddy with you, and uh, you were shot out of a cannon, and I realized that's that's who you were. It wasn't an act, and, and uh, it was explained to me that <laughs> Larry had saw you at at the time of the comedy club, Yuck Yucks. Opening for uh, David Brenner. Is that what it was? Okay. Yeah. I, 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 and, Which is now the laugh shop. Yeah. Oh, now it's the laugh shop. It's yep. the, the big one, and uh, it was funny because... Uh, what, what is what is Jeff going to do? And I'm not sure whether or not it was your idea or Larry's idea. And it was like from the headlines, you were going to take headlines. And it was like a truth is stranger than fiction, fiction segment. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We did them on cut boards. And, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. 94, 95 for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, you know, you probably saw Leno do it somewhere or something. And, you know, all good television is stolen from somewhere, usually the UK. But, uh, yeah, you know, did Tara McCool was there. Yes. Who else? Uh, there were a bunch of people. Yeah, we had producer uh, Sheila, Sheila Ray and uh, Carrie Dunlop, and on came uh, oh, Carrie right. Roberts. And there was just yep. so many names, so many people, you know, behind the scenes, so many great producers. And uh, something that you and I talked about when the news had come down that Larry had passed away was the fact, and it, 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 it sounds a little egotistical when we say, you know what, Larry's greatest gift was discovering people because he put, he put you on TV, he put me on TV. But I, I think that he really had an idea of what would click and maybe those people who would click together. Well, and, and he um, didn't necessarily find them where you would think. No, no. For one thing. And, uh, yeah, he just knew how to find the right person. He should have had a talent agency in L.A. Yeah, seriously. He would have got a piece of everybody. And people people to this day, A, remember the movie show, which shocks me. Yeah. Uh, but, B, when I describe it, I say it's like it's like Entertainment Tonight – before there was Entertainment Tonight or ET Canada, for that matter, in the sense it was syndicated in like 30 countries worldwide, maybe more than that, uh, went across the nation. And we would do, what, six shows. In one morning, we would take six shows yeah. and send them across the country, send them satellite. It was crazy what happened. Yeah. You know, um, Brett Wilson told me one time he, when he was doing Dragons. Was it Dragons, Dan? Yeah, that's Is what that he did. Shark Tanks in the Shark States, Tanks, Dragons. yeah. Yeah. Uh, he said, they tape like six of those a day. Yep. That's how it works. They're saving money. Probably with a bigger crew. A bigger budget. Probably, Not in yeah. the basement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Certainly a bigger crew and budget than we have here. Yeah. But the great part about this, and I, 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 uh, I actually I contacted Dave. Yeah. 
and well, he started texting me, and and I texted him back. Do you want to do you want to come on the podcast sometime? And uh, one of my selling points was, uh, you know, it's uh, we get to say fuck on the podcast, yeah. like just like we thought every morning. <laughs> That would have been pers- – and, you know, honestly, I think I dropped the F-bomb a couple of times. And uh, nobody – like, I mean, I got a little lecture, but nobody really – nobody called in and complained. And the only thing I could think was, oh, you know, he didn't mean it. It's – you know what it is? It's a – it's just Jeb. It's just Jeb. Like, you know, and I'm not sure if that's a compliment or an insult. <laughs> and usually followed by there's no fix in that. <laughs> And I, I can't, I can't, uh, you know, tell you how many times. And you know, for people who who might not be aware, you were at a channel. You launched that station, and I was doing things at Global and some some yep. other stuff, uh, other radio stuff at some CBC, and um, and then I, I finally made my way and, and got hired at City TV. So I never worked at a channel, and then uh, you uh, took uh, taken off, and a lot of the times I'd be walking toward the car at the parkade, and I'd be like, "Hey, I know you." You're Jeb Fink. And I'm like, actually, no. <laughs> well, we both did morning TV. Might as well change your name and go uh, with it. That or Johnny Reed. So I'm not sure if that means we're all very good looking. Johnny Reed? Yeah, Johnny Reed. I get a lot of the Johnny Reed. Oh, not Reed, but Reed. <laughs> no, there's a comedian named Johnny Reed. I've heard the name. But yeah, John, Reed. But the, 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 the country singer, Scottish singer. Yeah. And uh, I wish I had his money. But yeah, it's funny our, how our paths have crossed because then you came back to city and did uh, the evening weather, which you said, I don't know if this is the best decision, but they're paying me to be here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know what they were thinking, but, uh, you know, they yeah. welcomed me back. And yeah. Turned out okay for a while. And then yeah. just kind of, I mean, the landscape. If you look at from when you first started, look at the way all of it has changed. Yeah. What stands out the most to you? Oh my gosh! And it's going to sound cheesy and cliche, but the you know the people we we worked with, and, you know, shared people and people maybe you worked with and, and I didn't, and vice versa. Uh, the people in the broadcast industry have been nothing but great to me, and, and you know you got some real gems there. I, I have a hard time saying anything bad about people. You know, we just really great people in that whole teamwork yeah. sense. Uh, but the morphing of the industry and a lot of people who are writing is on the wall. You know, it's it's all podcasts. So podcasts. Oh wait. This podcast, right? Yeah. Podcasts have, have life for sure. But I think that in the end, traditional media, mainstream media, um, if you're not doing personality, you're sunk. Everybody's going to have the same headlines. You, you've got to have be engaging enough that people want to spend time with you. It doesn't matter what medium it is. So right. I, I still think there's plenty of opportunity and, and to get that local information. Because, I mean, you know, you know me, it's, it's been local, local, whether it's the meteorologist background or, or host. I'm, I'm now on 770 CHQR with, with Sue DL and having a blast there. Uh, but, you know, the, the people and the chance to, you know, I never say this in front of a boss, but never worked a day in my life. And, it's, and again, a cliche, right? I don't know. It's the time you get up. That's the work. Yeah, that's that's what the page. Because when I first started, I was doing all nights. Yeah, and woke up at whenever. Woke, drove to work. <laughs> drove to Period. work. Didn't wake up. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't have to be up so early, and that's like a real adjustment. You've you got a pretty. What do you have? Like twenty two kids now, or I something? Twenty three actually. I, I got four kids between the ages of three and a half and like sixteen and a half. So I'm still on a little bit of a diaper duty and dealing with teen attitude. So I always say it's going to either make me stronger or kill me. But uh, getting up at 3.10 in the morning, I usually push it. My wife will tell you 3.14, 3.16 with that backup alarm. It's the greatest for – as you know, you can spend more time with family. Right. Unless you have a comedy career and you're up all hours doing whatever it might be to, 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 to keep that going for yourself, you know. But you can you get to go home and be with the kids. Yeah, I get to pick them up uh, and uh, you know spend time in the afternoons. I, mean, I obviously, uh, if you know me, I, at one point I worked seven days a week for two years between Edmonton and Red Deer, and right. my my record was ninety three days in a row juggling these shifts. And some of them were work till midnight, get up for the morning show, uh, like you're talking about. Uh, but I think that three in the morning is the best shift possible. I mean, I don't know what the, I'd never drive in traffic. I've got the rest yeah. of the day ahead of me. Of course, I'm you know half asleep, and yeah, I'm 26 years old, and this is what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told know. you, 11. When uh, man. <laughs> it was. You know what is funny because we were talking about our mutual friend uh, Gary Swanson, and you said yep. he just had a, a mile 60th st- birthday. I wasn't going to out him and say 60th birthday, but that means. Oh, I will. That means, like, he was a, a young, strapping lad in his mid-30s when I met the guy. 
in Red Deer. Well, what are you going to say? I'm 63. What yeah, does that I mean, say about it me? Makes, it makes us all feel old. I mean, my God, when you say, you know, yeah, you were. Yeah, it does. You would have been uh, like uh, 38 years old, 39. You can't even remember. It had to be somewhere around that. Um, you know, apparently time marches on. <laughs> it does. I think I was actually, I think I was 39 when I became a grandfather. Wow. And I'm actually a great grandpa now. You're a great grandfather. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't remember whether we talked about <laughs> it. But. Looking at the family tree, there's another branch. But what's what's crazy about that is, I often think, if you're like you know, my son, my youngest, was 46 years old when he was born, and part of me looks at people who you know are grand grandparent at 39, and is is that almost better because you're still young enough to enjoy your life, and you have freedom, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. Hopefully, my kids never see this. Then you can have you know travel and, and do what you want right right versus like you know you know have have kids at an older age i don't know yeah i have no idea i have like when jessica was born it was like well let's make that appointment <laughs> let's <laughs> let's put a snipping into the all of this yeah oh man and everybody and i remember uh you know when we used to work uh, uh with uh, gord gillies uh global i remember the day he I'm, I'm telling his stories. Uh, um, he had his surgery. He said, I brought these two bags of peas with me to work today for my chair. And I was young enough to know, like, I, I was still oh, like, you didn't know. I was like 22. I was like, what does he mean? Like, I understood what a vasectomy was, but they don't tell you about the pain when you're that young because it's so far off. It's a million years off. But it's not that painful, I can tell you. It really, <laughs> it, well, I actually, um, did you watch? No, I was uh, I was on, on my back. <laughs> oh, I made him prop me up. Did you really? I said, I want to watch. And they were, um, I mean, I wrote a whole bit about it, about the day, because uh, basically, um, as I worded as gently as possible, they taped my little buddy to my belly. And I said, what are you doing? And she said, well, when he's, you know, got the scalpel and stuff, you don't, you don't want to. Yeah. But, oh, oh, let's get more tape. And it just, I sat up and, and watched the whole thing. And even the doctor's going, what are you, nuts? And I go, well, you know, you got a scalpel in my testicles. I, I'm going to pay a little attention. I know your bit because I've, I've seen your act. So many, I love your act. And, and the next, one of the next lines is, and then she got out the, 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 the razor. And you said, I'm fine. Or maybe just. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I haven't done the bit in years. So. That's a great bit. It sticks with you because yeah. that's real life, right? So that's awesome. I get every time I had a. Uh, uh, somebody had this whole thing I went through with my jaw, and somebody said, well, there's another 20 minutes. <laughs> and it is. Every time something horrendous happens in my life, it's more time on stage. Yeah. Well, I don't know if the vasectomy But it's, re it's relatable to people, yeah. right? Yeah. The vasectomy was a bonus. That's a, that's a, <laughs> yeah. a graduation point. It is relatable, and I, and I just love, you know, and, and again, like I've always uh, admired your stand-up comedy. I love stand-up, and when I when I uh, watch you, just the whole craft, uh, whenever I watch a comedian who knows what they're doing, I think nobody, and I've done amateur nights. I'm not sure if you've ever seen any yep. of the stuff I've done in, in the sense that for me, and it you've, was, you've hosted. Yeah, at the I've, Laugh I've been Shop. very lucky, and uh, Laugh Shops give me opportunities to, to come and host some 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 names there. And um, you know, they when I just show up and I never get there, you happen to be there. It's a great. I'm like uh, last time I was there, and they're like Jeb's here. I'm like this is the greatest t thing ever. But the the fact of the matter, as far as I'm concerned, that's skydiving to me because there's no more in the world creative medium than. This is you. This is your material. What pretty do you raw. Hide? You might hide behind a mic stand. You have to be pretty thin to hide behind that thing. Um, but it's, it's you. Like you don't get you don't get better than that. So you know what you've done is in, incredible. I know it's not a roast for and you. And really, but you know what? And the um, the more personal you make it, yeah. the more it makes it impossible for people to steal. That's a good point. Yeah. Like, well, you didn't do that. How can you talk about yeah. that? I mean, I had, when I was working the cruise ships, lots of stuff about the cruise ships. And now you're on this radio show and you've got all of these guests that are just tools. Yeah, no, absolutely. Not tools. Not, not, yeah, no. But a useful product. To, yeah, you know that you could take to the stage if you want to do it again. Well, and that's well, you know, and it's funny because um, uh, when uh, you know Matt at the Laugh Shop has called me in the past, it's been sometimes, and I, you know, to a certain extent, I know it. I'm the TV guy. You were the comedian who yeah. who does his thing and does TV on the side. I'm the TV guy, and, and maybe I'll mention it on the air. And I understand the cross promotion aspect, but I very much appreciate it. And what really got me was he called me a couple of years ago. 
God, with the pandemic, maybe it was 15 years ago. Um, yeah. Pauly Shore was coming to town. He goes, you want to you want to help us out with some hosting? I can give you five minutes on, uh, you know, do five to seven or eight, whatever. You and he was just really generous. And I thought, well, I haven't, you know, last time I, I wrote something was when Prince died, and that was uh, two and a half years ago. And and my wife goes, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I'm going to stay and stay up and write all night and get some stuff together. And that that gauntlet, like you say, you're just pulling stuff, and there's it's no better cramming for an exam ever than that because who's going to pay if it, if it fails? It's you. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. But I I've, I I've appreciated it. But to your point, yeah, life, and that's one of the things about the radio program, is you prep all you want, uh, but as you know, working with radio guys in the past, talk radio. We do our homework the best we can. We have the best team we can. But you saw the FM guys leaving at um, 8.55, 8.57 in the morning. Yeah. Left that last song. They're done. <laughs> but I read an article, and they say the life experience is, w- is what makes you unique. And that's the same with the stand-up that you've, you've crafted. And these outrageous things happen to you. But I think that they might happen to everybody, but they just don't notice. Well, I would be willing to bet some of the things that have happened to me <laughs> have not happened to everybody. I'd agree. I'd agree. <laughs> might be a little of my own doing. But when you're, uh, we were talking before we got started that I always found that uh, uh, anytime I filled in for Dave, uh, I was in there and they'd have all these questions and I would ask the first one and then something to me was more interesting from the answer and I went after that and then went after that and then, you know, down the rabbit hole chase and stuff. I mean, it's like we were talking, it's good to be prepared. Yeah. But uh, as for on air, what do you, what do you do? Four hours? We do uh, three, uh, three and a half, five three and thirty a half. to nine. That's a long time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, switching gears from one guest to the next. I listened this morning. Because oh, I'm, did you? Okay. I'm coming on. Yeah, yeah. And I thought it was going to be this morning, yeah. which uh, we save all the best guests for Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday's <laughs> the rocking day. No, that's great. I, I mean, I appreciate being on, and it's. Uh, uh, I asked somebody one time, "How do you, how do you prep for me?" Like you and I are fine. And uh, the last time I was on with Sue, but we brought a couple of other people yeah, from yeah. Crossroads Market, a couple of the other vendors. And uh, to me, it's really hard to, okay, like Andrew and I know each other so well yeah. that it's just a match for you and I to talk. And then it's like, oh, yeah, right. Sue's yeah. here too. And she's great at what she does. And one of the sweetest people. Yeah. Sue, you know? is, Sue is the easiest person to work with, true pro. Um, and I, I get the sense that, you know, in radio, not in, just in this market, any market, the, the, yeah, no secret. The woman, it was, you're the laugh track. You laugh at you know, XYZ DJ who's on the rock station and, you know, whatever it might be. Yeah. I'm not saying any name. But in general, like, that's what it was. And it's not to, to slight any station she worked at, but I don't think people saw that, whoa, 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 whoa. She's super intelligent, super sharing and yeah. uh, gracious. But, yeah, there's that too. And on TV, I, I, I found it worse on TV because on radio you can say, me, you, and it's it's more seamless. When they you have you on the TV couch with two people, two hosts, and two guests, I'd, I'd say to the producer, "Why are we why are we doing this? What what are, what are we going to achieve? What better are we going to get on two on two? Yeah. The radio, because of the nature of three and a half hours, it's it's perfect. You can spell each other off. Somebody might be having a great day. Somebody might not. Th- things go wrong. Computer crashes. Somebody can go and print something up. They want to come back around. But to your point with the producer, I think the the best producers out there don't get offended when you don't write their questions down. And, and like like you say, for you and I, and, and I think most people, yeah, a, a, a great first question is awesome. And then the door is open, like, like we were talking yeah. about. I mean, you're going to get offended. You wrote these five questions. Hey, buy yourself some extra time. Write the one and move on to the next segment. And the great producers don't get offended, I think. Yeah, no, they and you can't. No. Like things come up on air yeah. that you can't anticipate. Mm-hmm. But it's good to have that ammo. Yeah, safety net. You know, in the in the backpack yeah. just in case you need it. Yeah. But uh, what's funny now, I find that there's, um, I mean, the staffing just economically yeah. is really low. Like yeah. there aren't a ton of writers on morning news shows or any shows really. And because uh, the market's spread so thin, mm-hmm. like how, how do you combat that? Like there's so many options yeah. and not even not even getting to the internet, yeah, yeah. you know, like we are here, mm-hmm. you know, how, how do you stand out as, um, uh, like a public, it's a public yeah. 
broadcast. It's a but, great but question. But you're also online. If I had every answer to that, you know, we'd be number one with a bullet, and our ratings do do very well in our demo. And and I think that the pandemic has kicked the crap out of a lot of people because of the habits and the, the change in the sense that if you were a talk station and people's greatest routine was to get in that car at 6.30, turn it on, and then all of a sudden for like 20 months that they're not in the car, but at home they listen to satellite. At home they listen to Spotify. They listen to podcasts. Right. What then? You hope that those habits come back because it's so habitual that I remember in school, uh, Paul Dunphy was one of my radio instructors, and he said one of the greatest things, compliments he gets is, because he was doing it at the, at the time, the weather on the, the uh, CHFM. 95.9? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And he said the greatest compliment, and he said this in radio class, is uh, somebody said to me, I know that if I get out of the shower and I'm reaching for my toothbrush, I have to hear a forecast. That means I'm not late. So that's why the wheel and the clock was so important. Yeah. That's just a structure thing. But like I say, that's why I've never wanted to, to, to make uh, make my living on supper newscast, for example, on TV, in the sense that you're afforded this much opportunity to show personality, period. And I do believe, like, the compelling personalities, the people you can relate with, people make you laugh or, or quirky, that's all we have. Because the same the, – the, the, there was a fire on McLeod Trail this morning. Yeah. Guess what? Everyone's going to be giving you the same details. Forecasts can be off a little bit here and there, and I always said when I as a meteorologist and once a meteorologist, always a meteorologist, as you know, Jim. Um, is um, I was never a meteorologist. Is, <laughs> is that um, I was a weather presenter. But to that point, um, I, you could be wrong nine times out of ten. If people want to watch you, that matters more than your accuracy. Period. I believe that, and I mean I think we have to get back to some normalcy to get those habits back in traditional broadcasts, but. If you're ice cream or vanilla, like, yeah, I don't think, well, maybe, but then again, maybe right now, um, because also you look at broadcasts as far as I'm concerned, and it's the same way with podcasts making money, is does, does, a, does a TV or radio station make money or ratings? They don't have to be mutually exclusive, and I've seen it where right. it doesn't matter what the ratings are. I don't know. It's, it's a weird time, and I'm just happy I'm going to ride this train as long as I can because it's, it's what I do. Well, it's kind of a um, – I was wondering about the balance somebody – said, uh, you know, at, at the market, because I'm coming on to talk about an event we have coming up that'll be over by the time you get to see this. So, yes. Um, however, still open for before Christmas. We, and we have weird hours yeah. for Christmas. Well, oh, I thought we taped this and it would be live immediately following. It's not live in 10 minutes? I was thinking about it on the way here. <laughs> like, if we, get enough, if we get enough people uh, watching it could go live. I'd love to take calls. I mean, you know me. I Imagine like that. Nothing better than fighting with the public. Uncensored Jeb Fink phone calls? Sign uh, me up for that. Yeah, that would not be good. But I said, you know, to be honest, I think um, it should be easy to get a bit of coverage because I would think if I were working in a newsroom again, I would be dying for anything to talk about except COVID. Yeah. And there's really, I mean, it's been with us for so long. Mm -hmm. And then you see, like, the new variant came out, and then it's like, it's the worst one ever. And then all of a sudden they're going, well, you know, it might not be the worst. We might have jumped the gun on that. But sorry about shutting down all your vacations. <laughs> but um, it, it's got to be better to be able to find something other than that to talk about. A hundred percent. We, we, and that's part of it, COVID fatigue. People listening to a talk or any news format for that matter, I want to want, listen to music. I want to watch, I, I want to escape at this point. Yes. And, and that, that's the bottom line. Although in our duty and in our format, that's what we talk about. And, the, and I, uh, you know, when we get people who text or call in, you know, I challenge you to find another newscast in Canada, at least, that doesn't have a COVID story in the first five minutes. Like, this is what we have to do. And it's maddening. We, um, I think it probably was two months ago, where technically we had a COVID-free show. Um, not intentionally, but we started to move away. But then there was, hey, we have this charity benefit concert still online due to COVID. Or, right. you know, the, we were talking about kids' sports. Well, you know, still can't do this. Because of COVID, there's always that asterisk right now, which is just, it's killer. And what I, the greatest thing to me for uh, the past 20 months is the fact that it's really revealed a lot about people that you would have never known. Uh, neighbors, <laughs> friends, yeah. coworkers, and uh, it is this the craziest time. I, knock on wood, it's the craziest time in history. I hope this is it. <laughs> it's a really bad time to have that much information on the internet. It, it, 
And is that the is that the thing? And I I, I think I think per, perhaps it has to be because, you know, when I when I reference the Spanish flu a hundred and two hundred almost hundred and three years ago, I say you know what this is this happened and well you know it, it, what was conspiracy back then they just didn't know what was going on and uh, at the same time I remember I said on the air I said what this does to, what this says to me is this underscores that at the heart of it. You know, we're humans. Uh, you know, we can put somebody on the moon. We can do a podcast. But in the end, we're animals. And we can be affected by uh, by the virus, by germs, by whatever it might be. Yeah. And I got one text that said, you will never compare me to an animal. I'm a spiritual being. And I said, you animal. No, I didn't. You've um, never had a dog. I mean, know. here's the thing. I mean, yeah, I mean. My like, dog was very spiritual. We can, we can, we can, was. I saw the cross. I remember. The thing. Yeah, that's um, right. No, I, uh, you know, and I think about it. And like, I mean, seriously. Do we like that's mass ego on part of the species that we think that we're indestructible? I don't, and the, the, whole, the whole conspiracy, I just I've almost shut down now in the sense that I'll post food, pictures of my wife and and kids. Yep, and happy anniversary. Yeah, by it, the way. oh, thank you, thank you. Someone's put up with me for seven years. Um, you know, I got it right. Um, but you know, in the end, like it's not even worth it, man. And I bet you, you had some real struggles. You know, on the computer sometimes late at night when you've read something to just hold back. I bet that's that's hell for you. You know, the, well, <clears throat> the one that really gets me is this somehow how people are making a connection to Nuremberg. <laughs> oh, and I got gosh. a neighbor a couple of doors down that's like that. <sighs> yeah. And it's just like Nuremberg. How? Can yeah. you tell me how? Yeah. Other than some crap you heard on the Internet. And uh, you were talking about the Spanish flu. Amazingly, I mean, how many did people did that kill? I mean, yeah, millions more than COVID. And, and we weren't flying from one country. Yeah. Like the possibility of spreading it is just so much greater now. Mm -hmm. And somehow people have it in their head. No, it's my right to travel whenever I want. Yeah. Not really. Yeah, it can be restricted. Yeah, when your rights harm somebody else, and there's a there's a, a term for that, and it escapes me right now, and I'll I'll, I'll try to remember it. But yeah, asshole. Yeah, there's the term. That uh, there it is. <laughs> Look it up. I I just think that for me, yes, the, the 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 bizarre comparisons, but also, who is behind the conspiracy? And somebody had said to me, you know, they say government's behind. Government runs on tax, and the government, if they don't have people, they don't get so much tax. Yeah. Who is I just would really love it. I don't need somebody to, you know, find the watch the podcast and send me links to a YouTube video with a doctor. No, thank Nobody's, you. I don't need any of that. Yeah. Who like why is and, and in twenty in nineteen eighteen was that a conspiracy? Was that a conspiracy? I mean, ugh, come on. Like, like, let's live our lives. Let's take care of one another. I sound like I should get T-shirts made, uh, but you know, in the end, like this is the most bizarre. Let's just get past this thing. You know, come on. Yeah. Well, it, the anger level. Yeah. Is what gets to me. And obviously, in the U.S., it was prodded along by, as my friend calls him, uh, the horrible-haired orange. And uh, I don't even know. See, I'll go far enough to go, I, I'm willing to believe that this could have been a genetically manufactured mm -hmm. virus yeah. that was intended for warfare. Warfare or nefarious purposes. Okay. And yeah. it got away from them. Uh -huh. And I said that to somebody, and I said, well, you know, for all I know, they they let it go in China on purpose. And uh, this guy goes, well, they're, it's killing their own people. Yeah, I don't know how much that government has cared about. Their, these are the guys with the tank and Tiananmen Square that— You can see were, it online. You can see that online, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is not the most public-loving uh, government in power right now. And uh, and they got lots of people. Yeah, yeah, they got resources, the human resources. But somehow, somebody told me the other day that there was a connection to some lab in Winnipeg. Wow, and that's where it actually came from. And I'm like, yeah, like you got to just get off, get off the internet. The scientists snapped under that cold weather, and they yeah. I, I I often wonder because you know, when you brought up Donald Trump, is is he the main kingpin behind fake news? And denial, and you can change facts and alternative facts. Did it start with Donald lie. Trump, or did or did it happen? Basically, the bottom line is or deny or lie. Did it start with Donald Trump, or was it was it always there in some way, shape, or form? I I think politics has been 
drifting that way. And what's made me really sad is to see Canadian politics yeah. start drifting that way. And I always, I mean, because I'm an American by birth, but uh, Canadian by choice. Mm -hmm. And I've always just felt that uh, Canadians just go, oh, no, that's ridiculous. Yeah. We have yeah. to treat other people better than that. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, I've also said that we're 10 years behind whatever trend is happening in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And the big one to me is, let's watch what we're doing with firearms. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, nobody needs an AK-47 to go hunt a deer. What if they're fast? <laughs> you know, like honestly, what you need is uh, take your one-shot rifle and uh, go to the range and yeah. practice more. Yeah, like what about, what about the craft and the art of marksmanship? Yeah. What about that? And I had a friend uh, growing up in high school and uh, very much into hunting. And uh, one of his greatest solutions was, I, I feel like it should be fair for the deer, so I'm, I'm starting to hunt with a bow. And I said, "Wow, that's that's crazy." He's like, "Yeah, I got the tree stands and I'm, and I, I and there of, is a and I applauded that." Yeah, there's a lot more art. It's it, it to, takes a heck of a skill, and that's what he he was in for the sport. And maybe you have to hunt for meat. And then I'm hearing things about the the gun. Uh, legislation, the upcoming, could really hurt, hurt um, what is it called, soft, uh, what are they called, like the paint pellet guns, um, soft shooting or whatever they call those those guns. And I'm like, I don't think so. Because maybe you can Where get an auto automatic paint pellet thing. I mean, I don't think they're going to, I don't think they're going to be knocking on your door. <laughs> you get your paint gun. Did you shoot the neighbor's car with the paint pellets? I don't <laughs> yeah. think so. There's so yeah, much as soon as you shoot your paint pellet at the cops they're gonna go oh you you <laughs> misunderstood our so, intent but yeah i think there's a lot in and uh, something that you know i've talked with with friends and, and even with sue on the program is in canada uh, you know when it comes time on the federal level provincial level it's like we don't get new blood we can't re we don't we do we're ultimate recyclers when it comes to leaders you know yeah. like, oh well who's who can we bring back who can we you know, and, and we get a fresh blood. And you look at the Conservative Party of Canada, and it's like they've struggled for so long. And then they and they, they roll in uh, O'Toole, and Aaron O'Toole is going to be the guy. We didn't get to know him because of COVID. Is he the guy? Well, maybe not. Let's just, it's like right. we're dealing with hockey coaches now. You give them a season behind the bench, and they're out. Uh, I think we, we struggle with leadership in this country, period. Yeah. it's And that kind of amazes me. I mean, I, I did an event Saturday night, and uh, – I said, here's the deal in Alberta. Everybody now is going, uh, okay, we got to get rid of Kenny. Well, you you use Kenny to get rid of Rachel, and now you're going to get rid of Kenny. And people are going, I I'm going to vote NDP this time again. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, let me put this into perspective. I was married the first time and divorced her. I married my second wife, and then sadly, Judy and I split up, and I got another divorce. Now... What do you think the odds are that I'm going to go back to my first <laughs> wife and say, it's going to be better this time? It has to be. Come no, on. Neither one of us have changed. It's... Well, I've changed. I'm sober yeah. is the big change for me. And uh, and now she knows that I wasn't. <laughs> so <laughs> The cat's out of the bag on that one. Yeah, that one, that's pretty opened up. Yeah, no, but I... it's illogical. And I, I look at the NDP party and I'll, all I can think is, why haven't you found someone else in the party? As a new leader, like offer up something, yeah, or even like you hear, uh, you know, regardless of your, uh, regard, uh, regardless of your politics, uh, like Brian Jean's back, um, you know, Brian Jean. Uh, yep. So here we go again. You know, these are names, and somebody had uh, joked uh, the other day. I think Preston Manning's still alive. Let's see if we. <laughs> I, I don't understand. I know his kid. Do we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Small world. I, I just think that can we not? Or maybe people don't want to be leaders. I mean, I don't want that job. But who wants that job? You know, the headache. And if you think about, like, so for example, a, a mayor of, of Calgary, I remember years ago talking to, it was Dave Bronconye, and then I, I had a similar conversation with Mayor Nahed Nenji. Hey, what's your day uh, like? Uh, what's your weekend like? Well, I got a breakfast at 6. This is Saturday morning. Breakfast at 6. And a grand opening at 7.45. A luncheon. We wrap up at 11. You're going to be getting 8 bucks an hour. That's like the, the day of, off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wonder um, what, that would be great to find out yeah. what it works out per hour. The, but maybe the issue is, um, you know, maybe respect and politics don't go hand in hand, but maybe we need to show more respect for for these people in some, to some extent. I mean, I don't know. It's bizarre to me. Well, but it used to be looked at as public service and that you were – and they're, they're – I mean, in the U.S. for sure, a lot of the politicians are already wealthy people. 
you know, the the Kennedy, um, whatever you want to call them, yeah. like they they weren't broke. And no, no. He, Papa may Papa Joe may have made some of that money in some pretty nasty ways. The Bush family. The Bush family. Yeah. That's. Uh, you know, I'll tell you my favorite Bush family story I ever heard, and it was uh, in Ken Burns' baseball. I really like Ken Burns, and if you hate him, I don't, I don't care what you like. Um, but I can't remember who it was, but it was a, you know, it was a black player, and and uh, they were in spring training, and uh, uh, George Bush Sr came over and said, hey, you know, we're looking forward to a great year with you. How are things going at training camp? And he said, you know, to be honest, it, it'd be a lot better if I could stay in the same hotel as the white players. And still at that time, it was segregated. And uh, he said, well, what hotel are you in? You know, what are, where are the other guys at? I'll make a call and see what I can do. Mm -hmm. And uh, the player goes, well, you should be able to fix it. Your family owns the hotel. <laughs> And it was he didn't even know. <laughs> he didn't even know. The yeah. body's that deep. It's and, it's crazy. Yeah, and that's the racism thing. Yeah. And to me, the worst thing that came out of all of this that we've been going through is that it it allowed that to like give them an open forum to yeah. go out and be racist. And and I said, you know, people have a really short memory. Yeah. And if you look like uh, I mean, you know, I have seven half black grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, what happened to Black Lives Matter? Yeah. It just stopped. They stopped caring. Like, it stopped being a news story. Do you think that if we did not have the pandemic, the same like craziness when it comes to BIPOC and BLM would have existed, or is just, just was it just amplified? And blowing out of proportion as far as these attitudes and these the crazy stuff that happens weekly. We hear about things happening in the U.S. Do you think that it was just the ultimate, uh, with uh, excuse my French shitstorm uh, happening down south? And you know, or do you think people would have got along better? Just I don't know. I think it just allowed everything. Yeah. And out of all of it, the craziest thing to me was to listen to Republicans blame the Democrats yes. for Antifa. Yeah. Oh. And gosh. Antifa. Just once government gone. Yeah, yeah. All of them. That's that's. All. They're not on anybody's side. But between QAnon and Antifa and uh, uh, Omicron and um, social distancing, these are words. If we had this conversation two years ago, I it'd be know, foreign. I think QAnon may have you know it's been around for for, for, for quite some time and just not in the common lexicon. Kind of far. Yeah, they had a far lesser. Yeah. Membership. Fan Less yeah. people attending that concert. Yeah, a smaller back meeting hall <laughs> for that before. It's just the, the craziest time in the world. Like you, you think, and, and, and the other thing is during all this time, and again, so much going on in the world, we were discussing what, what would be the hardest to be that kid who was supposed to graduate from high school, who didn't have a graduation, who's unsure of the future, um, or a senior who's looking to round up their golden years at 85 years old living in this. Like, is there yeah. is there a, a worse place to be or a better place to be riding out this crazy two years? I don't even then know. Then here? Then <laughs> there is no, uh, like. like... I mean, age-wise, in, in a stage in your life. My my one, uh, my one my son, my youngest, uh, well over half his life, he wears a mask when we go to the mall or the grocery store. That's what he does. And it's it's commonplace. Uh, you see them dropping them off for school. He thinks nothing of it. Uh, they think nothing of it. And to me, I'm certainly not an anti-masker. I, I want to get past this. But it made me pause, and I thought, well, I'll just I'll, – half the time, you know, you're walking in across the parking lot uh, the way here. Got 20 steps out. Oh, got to go get my mask again. I, like, I, I could ditch it tomorrow. But yeah. these kids, you think that maybe they might want to be holding on to these masks. It is such a weird time. And, you know, honestly, I have no idea. And I know, I know that people take that statement wrong for me because I'll just go, I don't know. You have to have an opinion. And I'm not – yeah, and and it's like honestly, I told one guy he was telling me how you know they had a, I've been triple vac, so I obviously have a tracking device, <laughs> and uh, I'm like that is the most asinine thing. I said, you know what, I do have a tracking device, and uh, I'm actually I'm with Telus for my cell phone. <laughs> And I'll guarantee you, they can find me whenever the hell they want to. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be on. Yeah. 
you search something, you search a restaurant, and next thing you know, you got coupons, and it's it's the craziest. Yeah, thing. yeah. I mean, yeah, do you live in the bush. A few people. I, I'm not sure if you uh, delve and get into that rabbit hole. A few people that I've known from my history of life that I can not put on Google or Facebook and find. Right. There's very rare people, and I wonder how they do it. You know, because the rest of us, you can find if you. And generally, what comes up is when you're stalking someone. You know, when you're stalking. <laughs> you know someone, who, and you know who you are. It, it, even so, it's like, oh, they ran in the Scotiabank Calgary Marathon in 2008. Oh, they gave her. Oh, they sold selling something on Kijiji. Whatever it might be, it's what how what percentage of people are anonymous? But you know, Nobody it's is. it's funny because of the careers you and I have had, which mine is coming to its its. Uh, Demise. I don't know what like. Hey, I, don't, I keep changing. Uh, well, and we then this on, started fancy because setup. of John. He's like, oh, you should do this again. And I was like, yeah, I'll come by. And here we are. But uh, um, throughout all of this, I have always thought of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram as business tools. Here, here, yeah. And not. Uh, I put very little personal stuff yeah. on there like um i mean i went through this stupid surgery thing and i put almost nothing yeah on online about it because you know some things yeah you know you don't have to tell everybody everything however i have a 20 minute bit about it <laughs> no, you, if, you, if you pay to come see the show <laughs> that's right then you get the story that's how you get the story but uh, and you i mean you have a large family yeah. and there is now even in the like I think you're the same sensible person as me. You you have thought of what you do as how you make your living. You mm -hmm. haven't thought of it as a lot more. Like it's a great job. Yeah. But it's a job and it's what you do. It's it's a fun job. It's there's a lot of bonuses yeah. to it. But it's still work. And now you're at the point even like for people like you or I that you have to be cautious about what you put out there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've been, I've been attacked online, and I've had to delete people, and it's crazy because yeah, if that's if that's who I wanted to be, if I wanted to get into the arena and uh, get in the dirt, it's not it, a meteorology prof. And we were talking about social media and the, and the role it has in in weather. Um, at Mississippi State University, we we're down there in a, in a seminar, and he said, you know, Facebook, they call it friends. He goes, really, I have four friends. He goes, well, maybe three. My wife. My buddy from elementary school and a buddy I was in the army with, or whatever it might be. He goes, those are my. He goes, but I have a thousand Facebook friends. He goes, because it's a marketing tool, just like that. Right. And it's interesting to me, in the sense that you know, for me, it's it's a chance to keep up with friends, and I'd like to plug what I'm doing on my on, on the show. Sure. And uh, charity aspects and friends who have a, a business interest or whatever it might be, um, and I'd love to give an opinion. I'm not going to give an opinion anymore. It's 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 not worth it and you know what it's and when you do call people out and uh, we, i noticed this a lot on the radio show when you stand up and you say well you know you give me your digits and i'll you, you can get a hold of me whew, there's nothing anymore you used to tell yeah. me and i remember this uh when you know, probably when you were on the big breakfast uh, for some reason at some point your phone number was out there or was even listed in the phone book and you said i answer when people call and I, and I then I had to get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. At some point you had to, yeah. But I mean, because that's the thing. When you confront people uh, with their BS, generally they, you know, show a little bit more respect. But you know, in the end, broadcast, as, as you know, it is a job. And when when you're 25 years old or 23 and you're working at Red Deer, and it was like, uh, for me, because they moved production of the movie show to Red Deer, and I was like in my low low 20s, early 20s, it was like college days for me. Right. I was nose to the grindstone when I was in broadcast school and I was working to pay myself through in a, a hardware store. That was that was icing on the cake and too many late nights and just eating crap food and hanging out with friends. Um, and yeah, and then it became something that you, you can pay the bills doing broadcasting. And it is. It's not the accounting firm, but you know, you, you take your lunch in the morning, you do the best you can and you, you hope the people... But it's so lunch. work. It's, it is work, for sure. But I, I respect it as, um, you know, a profession. And I think that, not that I didn't back then, but like you say, I mean, the same way uh, you have a million great lines on this, and when people ask you for free stuff, you know, give give six hours of your time, and you say, well, yeah. give six hours of my time. This is what I do professionally, but I think sometimes yeah. it's not viewed as that. But when you're when you're on air, there were I there was a certain amount of events I was expected to yeah, do for sure. And the way I looked at the deal was, I will never do anything that I don't support. 
That's a good point. I yeah. will only do events that, I mean, you know, uh, women in need, uh, f- uh, children, families. Yeah. Uh, I cut off the phone number, by the way, when a guy called me and uh, asked me to buy him a coat. Really? Just called you on the home landline? And- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you buy me a coat? Well, why would I buy you yeah. a coat? You have more than I do. And I said, you know what, sir? You're going to go through your whole life. Where people are going to have more than you, and there's going to be people that have less than you, and you know, I truly, I've I've been blessed, and yeah. and um, I'm by no means a wealthy. If somebody went on Wikipedia and listed my net worth as three to five mil, and uh, oddly enough, about two weeks later, some lady brought her friend in to meet me because she knew I was single. What? Oh, yeah. And this is the best. She brought her in. She was still hammered from the night before. And I said, you just brought a drunk woman to meet a recovering <laughs> alcoholic. I don't, I don't think this is going to work. You saw the humor in it, though, didn't you? I did. And I was just like, and, uh, I, and I felt bad because I thought, you know, it's 10 in the morning and you're still hammered. And uh, honestly, that was me for a lot of my life. And, uh, yeah, and you feel, you feel bad. Yeah. And it's like, you can't help, you can't fix anybody else. No. I can barely fix me. Yeah. Well, you're doing a pretty good job. I mean, you've got things going on and (laughs) I got stuff going on, but you know, it's still, and that's, you know, I've told the story before the name came from somebody that came to meet me and they said, you're sober, but you're still nuts. Are you going to sh- shut it off? Like, that's it? Like, that's nope. not who you were? Working in the the shoe store, and uh, was it Coeur d'Alene? Or was it uh, uh, Spokane, where you were working in the shoe kind store? Kind of all over. I worked, I mean, I ended up going to Alaska. To... Were shoes your, like, it wasn't just a one shop? Like, you, you worked in? Oh, no, I, I managed. I did not know At that. At one point, I was running a place that did $1.3 million. And uh, that, we're talking 78. <laughs> that's a lot of shoes. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, yeah. and we had a wet bar in the back. And I let my crew... <laughs> Drank all day, and they were the happiest crew yeah. and very good at what they did. But, yeah, you know, it, it, it just uh, – and sales is sales. And being on yeah. stage, you're selling yourself. That's and when point. you're on camera yeah. or on the mic, you're selling who you are. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And it, but in, where, where the position you're at now, it's, it's not your opinion that everyone's looking for. They're looking for information. It's interesting because we have to draw the distinction that every uh, half hour they're going to bring you news, but we are the talk portion, and so we're we're paid to offer opinions. However, and I don't think that, I, I've never heard this is the station directive. This is what you have to say. But the same way, when I used to be a meteorologist, I wouldn't. You'd want to be as accurate as possible, and you yeah. can't be. You you have to have, and as you know, in in the world of comedy, they say the 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 most extremes don't last. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. You have to no. have that broad appeal. So I can't, oh, you know what I would do? And, and you've heard this before. Oh, let me let me do this. Or, oh, sorry. Let, let me tell a joke, Jeb, because I've, and I remember yeah. that one time a receptionist at the TV station told you a joke. I don't know if you remember. I'll have to tell you off mic because it was just filthy as all get up. She goes, I got one for a tell Jeb a joke. And she told you the most off color joke in the history of the world. <laughs> and it was a little, <laughs> a little receptionist. Is that a global? No, no, that was it. That was it. Uh, City. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she told me this joke. <laughs> But the whole point is, when you do something on camera, on mic, or on stage, people think it's, you know, the easiest thing in the world. But you have to look at who the audience is and be broad enough, have an opinion, but not be too offensive, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, at the same time... Yeah, I don't care in a club. If, if people are... If people are <laughs> well, I can see you, that. You, yeah, you oh, know. There, there are no... And, and uh, that's something I'd like to ask you in a second here. Uh, but... You know, I you know we offer opinion, and hopefully we have different opinions. Sometimes we have the same opinions, but yeah, these are our opinions. And when people get upset with us, we say, "Well, the news is over here in a half hour. This is yeah. the talk station, and you have a chance for." But opinion. also on on I find on your show between you and Sue, there's a nice balance. Oh yeah, yeah. And you do like I I know that it's organic. It's not a um, you're not planning. Okay, this time you're going to be. Yeah. You know, you're going to be pro red states and yeah. I'm going to be blue. Like, you don't, it just happens. Yeah. And it's honestly who you guys are, but um, uh, you certainly are never looking to offend people. 
and you put the caveat in sometimes like, look, I'm not trying to make anybody angry, but this is what I find. And, you know, it's okay. Uh, Somebody told me the other day, when did it become wrong to disagree? It's not this disagree. It's being uh, disrespectful and offensive to the other person in their opinion. That's uh, yeah, it, but it's it okay. Like yeah. it's you and I, and and they said, you know what, you and I have disagreed on many points, mm-hmm. but you've never. It's never changed how you felt about me. And I said, of course not. Yeah, you know, and like if I disagreed with you, it wouldn't change how we feel about each other. Yeah, I don't know when that went out the window, but at the same time, you know, it's interesting. You said something. That stuck with me. Um, it could have been 10, 15 years ago. Um, and you said, <laughs> you said, you know what? You will never in a million years regret not saying, uh, you know, something um, uh, offensive or defamatory or just telling somebody to FO. You'll never regret not doing that. Yeah. But you will regret, you know, uh, you know, and it's totally. And I, I do from sometimes, and uh, I, maybe it was. The, where my metabolism was at, that I would just rail on somebody, and and it was unwarranted, and I always felt shitty about yeah. it later, you yeah. know. And it was like, God, I got it. How do I stop doing that? Like that's just ridiculous. But that's that's so true. But back to back to the comedy part. I to this to this day, and I will uh, defend. I really don't care. There, are like, but this many topics maybe that I think should be taboo on stage when I when I'm watching a, a favorite comedian, and I think that that should be, you know, protected to the end of time. Because if you can't just let it rip in that arena, and if you're in that, if you paid money to get there, maybe you won tickets on a radio show, I mean, whatever it might be, maybe somebody took you there for an office party. Maybe don't go because I think that that's, yeah. that should be the last bastion of like free speech, period. Yeah, it, it should be. However, we have learned from Netflix huh. that it's just not. And to be honest, I haven't I haven't watched Chappelle's no, whole no, I, thing. I but um, you know what I found on? I mean, I have a couple of uh, uh, at the very least people that are acquaintances, if not uh, in the family or people I consider actual friends that are, are trans, transgender or mm-hmm. some, they're at some point of that. Mm-hmm. And I will say things to them never on Facebook for public consumption. Yeah, yeah. But things that, and I'll go, oh, I wrote a really funny joke. And uh, uh, my one for for the holiday season, and like I said, seven of my grandchildren, their fathers are black. And uh, I said to somebody, um, my kids are suing them all, my grandkids, because there's no half Black Friday. <laughs> and I said, that's how ridiculous it yeah. has gotten to. Well, why don't we get our rights to a half Black Friday? And I know if I put that on Facebook, yeah. it would be endless. Yeah. I'd get pounded on, although I did it here, but I'd get pounded on endlessly about it. And it's... By no means derogatory towards, you know, anybody, race, creed, color. Like, it's just, you know, that's the point that I think we've gotten to is that people will get offended at that. I've been excluded. Yeah, the offensiveness in the whole. I don't know. I I, I don't know if we need a thicker skin. I don't know what's going to change these times. I really have no idea. And maybe that's maybe we need more less people to throw their hands up, you know, like I'm doing and saying, uh, there are certain things I don't want to post when I would have posted. Yeah, but you have a job ago. to do too. Yeah, it absolutely. Affects your job. But I mean, when you're being called uh, left leaning, and and I and I have to explain that I've never I voted liberal maybe in 1991 before I really paid taxes. Um, but other than that, like I am, I'm a conservative guy. Like I am, and I want, you know. Having said that, I'll I'll bash them down when they do things incorrectly. But fiscally, like that's that's my team, you know. And I'd like to see, you know, everybody taken care of. And I explain to my kids, I think when the economy is clicking, we give more. We don't need government to hand out everything to the people and um, you know uh, but I get oh you're anytime I say anything that you know a left-leaning liberal uh, you know lefties and it's you know being labeled it's just not worth it it, it really isn't no I, I I was gonna I've erased more posts than I've put out but um, 
and I also, I've said this before, I had two people that I had to refriend to tell them to fuck off. <laughs> I just came back to say goodbye. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, man, I could have had that plane in the background. See, this is why I was never a hey, producer. Hey, Jim, welcome back. Oh. <laughs> By the way, yeah. But it's just like the things you get attacked for. That's and, what I'm saying. And the, the funny one where I thought, you're not even hearing what I'm saying. And it was when Trudeau uh, made it a point to include LGBT in the U Charter of Human Rights. Mm -hmm. And I put on Facebook, we didn't need to do this. Mm -hmm. They have always been included because they're human beings. Under the Canadian, Canadian people. They're Canadian That's... people. They're human beings. They've always been included. The problem we have is that people don't respect it. That's a that's a huge point right there. Yeah, that's and the man, document. I just got yeah. my ass kicked, and it was like some of them were people I knew that when I can't believe you know the amount of friends you have that are in that community that I'm like you're not reading it. Yeah, what I'm saying is they have always been yeah. part of us. It's it's yeah, and I mean, how many people have read it? How many people have gone through it with a fine tooth comb? How many people remember grade nine social studies going through that constitution? For me, what it was was the week when uh, BLM was really blowing up. You know, we did a lot of coverage. You know, we COVID, COVID, COVID. We did BLM. Uh, we're doing serious topics. We talked about it three and a half hours a day, what we're doing as a nation, the issues face, facing North America and the world for that matter. And it just so happened because it was in the spring um, and I'm afraid of heights. I needed my gutters cleaned on, on, the, on the roof. So, I mean, like anybody else uh, who wants to not just flip through the phone book, well, the phone book, but on my 95, um, <laughs> online, I want to get a referral. Right. So I had a, a picture of a guy cleaning a gutter. I'm like, hey, uh, hey, uh, friends and neighbors, does anybody have a local person who does great gutter cleaning? Please let me know. And I got attacked uh, by one person, and another person jumped on saying, this week is about BLM, and you're asking for somebody to clean your gutters. <laughs> so, well, because unfortunately, <laughs> during BLM week, my gutters are full. I, well, I'm trying to keep, like the economy is. But in what the, were you supposed to do? I, I don't. That's know. That's what I don't. I, I'd, you'll, I, I feel you'll never make those people happy. That's in it, and that's when I realized yeah, less is more, and it's it's a shame because I don't have all day to fight with people because I want to find somebody local who might be looking for work or a company that isn't been clicking because of COVID to come out, they can wear their mask and I'll pay them their asking price to clean my gutters so my basement doesn't flood. And so and that, that I was, don't fall off a ladder. And I, yeah, I'm a bit of a tender flake and I was afraid of falling off that ladder. And that was the last straw for me. I had to delete a couple people. And yeah. uh, it, was, it was just, it was not a fun time. And I mean, little things like that shouldn't be huge things. You know, and it's not enough that – because we don't see what everybody's doing. Like uh, literally, if you add it up, like 16 or 18 hours that week, we focused a large part of our programming on uh, on BLM. And we focus what's happening in the world. So I, I, I think that you can, you know, you can have a few things on the go in your life. And I, uh, I don't know when we got so close-minded that that's not the case. I don't know. Well, I actually I, – I wrote a um... – just a short, like a, a skit that would be going to like Saturday Night Live or something. And uh, it was all questions that revolved around that. And it, uh, uh, one of them, so here's my theory about the whole, um, I love it when everybody says, well, the police are are killing so many black people. And then somebody would say, well, you know, statistically, they actually shoot more white people than black people. And I said, no, the problem is they're shooting people. <laughs> like, what do you, I don't care what the color they the are. The blood coming out of the gun. <laughs> I don't care if it's mostly, they're shooting people. Yeah. Stop shooting the Irish. Like, just stop shooting people. And uh, I wrote this for stage. I said, the problem is, in America, the largest percentage of people are white. So if you pulled your revolver, and pull the trigger while turning in a circle, you would shoot more white people because there's more of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I honestly, um, when, when you look at all the statistics, they're saying that, I mean, they even get mad when, when black police officers shoot black um, people. 
Yeah, a citizen, yeah. yeah. Instead of going, okay, well, this is obvious. I mean, obviously, that cop is not racist. But I think the problem is, I think the police are afraid. Yeah, I mean. Maybe not so much here. I think it's got to be a little bit easier here. But in the States, some place places the police are petrified when they pull somebody over cuz everybody's got a gun. Who would yeah, who would who would want that job in the unknown and the way it's been going in in the US? I mean, they've got to be on their last nerve and uh, to that point, you know, even even here moving it back yeah, to our side of the border with this defund the police and then when people are protesting, they're protesting at hospitals. Heaven forbid your mother might have to go in for an emergency surgery. You know, I mean it's yeah. I don't it's it's, it's just so no, topsy turvy. Yeah. They're not thinking. Yeah, who are we who are we going to attack that is here to you know And you know what the the one of the things when they said, you know, it's they're not gonna be sending the police with some of these um, lack of a better way to put it, psychiatric calls and then We've had social workers that were uh, killed it's, making one of those calls. And it's like, no, they need to be protected when they – this is – their job is not to go into really dangerous situations. Yeah. And it's like, well, no, we just need more social workers. You know, it's it's like, you know, oh, you know, the problem with the school shootings is uh, we should give the teachers weapons. Yeah, I've, like, I've heard that. What? Like we're just, <laughs> where are we where are we stopping here? Yeah, and I said, you know, if the my teachers would have weapons, uh, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> and I know the name of the teacher that would have shot me. I was a horrible <laughs> person. But it's the answer is to, you know, gun violence isn't yeah. more guns. Yeah, violence uh, doesn't prevent violence. Uh, and I mean, in the end, I think that I think that yeah yeah a different scenario up here, a different situation up here, and I, and I think that. It's just the case of, you know, are we raising kids incorrectly these days? Is are, are kids more cruel in schools? I think it's a, that we're just older and now we think that they're more cruel because they were cruel when I was in school. We yeah, and I online doesn't help. I think our parents thought that same way. Yeah, that's a good they point. thought what's happened. Yeah, the world has gone to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. you know, and I, I'm. Sure, every generation has said that. And, you know, my generation's music is better than my kids' generation's music, and that's an old person talking, you know, and it all sounds the same. Yeah, but that one's right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that Our music was way better. Yeah, I just don't know. Like, if you, I can't even imagine trying to break in right now, and, and what kind of a – do you have 12 tracks? Have you, have you, really, have you toured – no, I did a great song on YouTube, and I got, you know, forty-six thousand uh, listens in the first twenty-four hours. Okay, let's get you on stage. Ooh, let's, let's hold off on that. Well, and in world. comedy, that's what makes somebody a star. That's a now. good point. That's a good Is point. Having a huge following on social yeah. media. Yeah. And um, I mean, you mentioned Matthew before, and yeah. and he is great at weeding out the okay. I don't think this guy's got a lot of followers, but he may be a one trick pony. Yeah. So there and there are. There are a lot of people on out there on the social media that are good at doing stand up. Yeah. And they're just looking for a place to be be found. Yeah, I, I think back at the, you know, for example, last comic standing, which you know I don't think that shows on the air anymore. No. But they had to come up with something like uh, ten or fifteen minutes a week. Brand new stuff, and to me, that's the equivalent of you know, uh, you know, taking some of these uh, workshops here in town, which were invaluable, and I just really enjoyed it. And I read uh, Judy Carter's book, uh, uh, The Comedy Bible, and looked at some of these, hearing the stories about people who would um, go up to Fort McMurray, um, stay the night on a couch for fifty bucks, and have to cook your dinner in the coffee pot, craft dinner, and yep. you think you do that every weekend for two years. That's your you know, 12 minutes a week guaranteed versus, yeah. your, hey, I got six great on YouTube. But see, um, I misunderstood you and said, I think it was Larry Reap on Last Comic Standing saved a seven minute set for the finals. Oh, was it was him. Okay, yeah. I'd have to... He actually saved what he felt was his hottest seven Just held minutes back and... and thought, you know what, if I get there, I'm going to win this. Yeah. And, but the thing people don't realize is by the time you see people on these shows, some of them have been doing stand up for 15 years. That's a good point. They're not fresh face comedian. No, you just don't know them. No, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a that's a huge point. And just the the amount of like that's that's those are the rock stars um and what you did coming up as far as um the real glamorous spots some of them I'm sure. 
<laughs> with a with a chicken wire in front, maybe even, um, you know, getting paid nothing, wondering will there be a free meal at this thing? That was those were the tour buses, and when I say tour buses, like maybe Chevy minivans that the the rock yep. stars toured through. And can you compare the two? The person might be slick on the on the on the computer, and you know, you do the same thing six minutes over and over again. Your hair looks great. Yeah, do it every night, and and bring new stuff. Uh, you know, every every yep. second show. It's it is a different world. Yeah, it's funny because yeah, you make the music parallel to the comedy parallel. I never thought of it like that. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a, you're doing the same thing. You're entertaining people. Yeah. And but but you can't use the. However, we can't. Yeah, we can't be a cover band. We <laughs> we can't go up and, you know, do a Richard Pryor album. Although well, I'm sure it's been done more. Like I mean, there's more theft in comedy than. And how? Yeah. How often? How often does it happen versus how often do you catch somebody in the act? Because you'd have to be watching. Uh, obviously, more uh, more easily done in 2021 when you can watch somebody's stuff online. But you or one of your buddies or a manager type with, would have him. to see somebody do yeah. something. And is is it is it? I've heard a couple comedians when I've when I've been out uh, hanging out around shows, fighting over things. And is it the nuance? Is it is it an element or is it the bit word for word? And I mean. We're creatures of, of we're sponges, you know. In, in in life, something tweaks you. You you think something's funny. What are the odds somebody doesn't have a bit similar? You know? Well, yeah, and there's a, I was gonna say, there's a lot of um, similar things that uh, anybody could have thought of. And uh, one of my favorites, I was in I think it was Halifax, and there's two comics literally fighting in the back over this bit. And I said, what bit are you fighting about? Uh, well, he's doing my Arnold Schwarzenegger as an airplane pilot. I was, I just started laughing. I said, you both suck. <laughs> like, I'll bet we could go online and find 50 guys that do that. Yeah. And there's, the and thing. it's not exactly like, you know, I would write stuff and I kept thinking, I, and I would ask other people, do you know anybody that does this joke? Like, it seems... And when I first started out, it was like, this seems too good for me to have written. And, uh, you know, I, I am a, a prolific writer. Like, I write constant. Everything yeah. that happens is a bit in my life. And uh, I'm really lucky that way. And uh, there are guys that just struggle. Yeah. And so they give up. And, you know, I mean, I think I just watched something with, uh, Stewie and the dog that uh, the dog was stealing his his um, Twitter yeah. account and doing it on stage as a comedian. <laughs> and Stewie catches Brian doing it. Yeah. But uh, no, I mean it's it's a, it's a slippery slope, and even today, anything like I, f I found a funny tweet once. This is maybe ten years ago, and I just I changed a word on it, and I said at, and it wasn't a comedian. It was, it was just a funny tweet, and I said yeah, adapted from. Oh, this woman came at me and said, why didn't you just use my original tweet? And I'm like, because I'm in Canada and you're in the States. And it was something about a mall or something. So it had to. Rah, 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 rah. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like just the, the seriousness. It, you know, I had to make it appropriate for Canada. Yeah, it, it didn't make sense. You know, right. talking about a, a sack of fries or a soda. You know what I mean? Like we, we use different language up here. It's as much as we're influenced, we do different things. Right? Yeah, Collo Can you colloquialisms. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, now we're talking about fries. I want to uh, uh, ask you if you've been down. I'm sure during the pandemic you haven't, but you also introduced me to my uh, favorite burger place, I think, in history, um, Hudson's Hamburgers. Oh, uh, I don't know why. I'm just oh my the God, food, they're so good. Yeah, in, uh, in and there's Florida. nothing to it. Yeah, if, what two things? I don't think they have fries. I think they have a shake, maybe. Nope, they Burgers. don't have fries. Um, they might not even have a shake. They have pie. Yeah. Which, because there's a really great pie place in Coeur d'Alene. Yeah. So if you're listening to this in Coeur d'Alene, you already know what I what we're talking about. Hudson's at like 10 in the morning, it'll be lined up, waiting for them to open. What, they, 100 years they've been open? And it's something, something like, like that. The majority of that time is the same grill, which is the size of this table, maybe. Yep. Um, reminds me a lot size wise of the Galaxy Diner here in town, Brad Meyer's place. Yep. Um, and it, the simplicity is key. And I think they have special sauces you can put on some different mustards or ketchups. They got a hot mustard but that's pretty wicked. You told me, and I've been down there a few times, and it, it is fantastic. And I think you said that they were approached uh, by Guy Fieri and or one of those guys like <laughs> they, we want to do the drive in. They threw him out. You got to eat here or something like that. And they're like, yeah, I guess we, we're too busy. We got. <laughs> yeah. Well, they wanted to, he. The production company wanted them to close for like two days. 
We don't close. <laughs> what if, well, we'll make you famous. We are fucking famous. What do you? We got a line up at ten in the morning for hamburgers. Yeah. Wait, and, what it, do you, and they were three bucks each. I think when I was down there, there weren't six yeah, or eight bucks. Nope. You know, and I got two or three of them. <laughs> I used to buy a dozen. Like I'd get a dozen, and when I was leaving to come back up here, I would buy a dozen and mm-hmm. I would eat them the whole way home. And why? That sounds like maybe the best road trip in history. Yeah, cold, hot. <laughs> then, I don't care. Yeah, but I, it made me think when I said sack because they call it a sack of food or they call it a bag of sack in the U.S. And yeah, you, you wouldn't hear. But man, alive. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we covered a lot of ground. I don't know if we talked enough about food because uh, you know. Well, I, we are I, food guys, and you know what? I, I thanks for reminding me. So there is a. I got a flyer, and I would think you don't. You're not far from me, so you probably from. Talk Talk? Talk Talk. I think it's Talk Talk. Okay. It's a Korean hot dog place. Oh, I've heard my kids love the Korean hot dogs, but I don't know about this okay, place. Okay, and they're, so they're basically corn dogs. Yeah. But they have different um, coatings. It's like panko, some of them. Panko. And then inside, inside, crushed ramen noodles. And it doesn't have to have any hot dog within it. Is that right? Or it can or doesn't have They to. have some that they have desserts. Yeah. Uh, they have a vegan one, and this was my thing because Jesse is vegan. So uh, my daughter and we're, I'm going. Okay, well we got to have a hot dogs if we can get them from here, and I couldn't find it. I mean, I got like a killer GPS, and then uh, as far as I could tell, uh, the address was the Holiday Inn on on Blackfoot yeah. Trail. Uh huh. That it was in there, and I stopped there, and and I asked the girl. And she goes, well, I don't know. I've never heard of it. And uh, I was, like, pissed because <laughs> I'm like, I really wanted to be able to Try take out. something. Yeah, I, well, yeah, they have merguez. They have a merguez mm-hmm. sausage, which I love. And uh, um, she said, oh, I've never heard of it. And so I go down and we get – I pick up Vietnamese subs because you can get really good tofu subs too. But uh, – I said to the girl, you know, I, I don't, I don't know where this place is. Have you ever heard of it? And um, uh, she goes, Yeah, I think it's in the Holiday Inn. I said, Well, somebody needs to tell the girl at the front desk. <laughs> yeah, because if it's in there, I'm not. So you finding. still don't know where it is. Nope. Talk, talk. You think and I know right? there's some on Seventeenth that are yeah. Korean hot dog. That's where my. That's places, where but my I don't think they're go. the same yeah. company. I will look for that. And I mean, I've seen a lot of little tiny pop ups, you know, or they, they yeah. roll their food truck and park it there. But those are some of the best. Flyer. Does it? Says yeah, now yeah, open. Do, yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, I don't know. I, I still have a lot of food FOMO. Like, I have to try the newest, latest. If you say this is the greatest A, B, or C, I have to try it. Yeah. Well, they're doing a different take. You place. were kind enough to have me back on the morning show when you were, when you were doing basically what I had been doing. Yeah. Then. Yeah. And we went and did the hot dog thing. Yeah, we did hot dog week. And the uh, the best hot dog there was um, the simplest. Yeah, and I forget Montreal where that... dog Grumans. Was it a Grumans? It was a oh, Grum- Grumans Grumman steamer dog? Do great stuff. And I yep. remember being a Tubby dog. And... As does Tubby. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it was just awesome. And that, um, I and it wasn't you or I, but somebody was cracking beers that morning, and it was like six he, um, six fifteen in the morning. This <laughs> was an insight to. <laughs> Go to Tubby Dogs. When we walked in, uh, he opened a beer and brought it to me. Is that right? Before and I had to tell him, I said, I, I quit drinking. No. <laughs> yeah, I know it seems impossible, yeah. but. Yeah, oh, I'm like, there was another hot dog place. But there was somebody else on the on the judge. Uh, Gilchrist, group. John Gilchrist was with us. I he think, wasn't was he? drinking. No, no. And I don't know. I don't think I, and he said he was drinking Pabst Blue Ribbon. It, it was a. Uh, so, yeah, you weren't. But no, there, no. there was somebody anyway. But uh, yeah. Probably should remain nameless. Good. Yeah, seriously. Good hot dogs. I um, mean, there was a place in Midnapore. They've shut down, but the Groomans, the Tubby Dog. Well, cool. and I thought, I thought that guy was going to do really well because he had a stand at the lake during the summer. The Midnapore. Yeah. What was it called? The hot was it hot diggity or hot dog? Yeah, I can't yeah something like that. That was really good. I hate to see a hot dog place close. I think the hot dog is underrated. I've got a hot dog steamer at home. Yeah. Um, that one of the engineers, Romeo from City TV, said you got to get one of these. He brought it to work, and that was my Christmas gift three years ago. And it's one of the most well used appliances because it steams the buns and the yeah, dogs. Everything's done the way it, it should is be. Fantastic. We were in Mexico one time, and I was really hungry. We we're driving along, and. I go, oh, look, a hot dog truck. And I, I stop and I come back and I got a bag with far more than one hot dog in it. 
<laughs> and Judy just goes, what the hell is that? And I said, they're wrapped with bacon and deep fried. She said, no, like some Ramon <laughs> I was like, let me hold man, that for you, Jeff. Man, yeah, I, those, I got to have more of those. Oh, man, I swear. I, I can't get enough. I love unique food. I love cooking. It's so much fun. And yeah, somebody, I, I want to say my neighbor at the market uh, does spices, Stefan, and he was on the show. And he had just gotten back from a big trip. And he goes out around the world. And uh, and he brings these spices and stuff back. And uh, he said, uh, I said, I don't know, you know, I'm, I might change what I'm selling here. Like, maybe I'll change it up somehow. And he goes, oh, you know what? You should be doing Bulgarian food. Pretty sure it was Bulgarian. I was like. What? Like yeah. nobody else has been to Bulgaria, buddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like what? Untapped market? Like I don't understand why. Somebody... Yeah, no, I don't. I don't get it at all. At all. <laughs> and there's other things that, and we've talked about this, uh, Shawan and I, about the um, one of one of my other neighbors' coffee place is from uh, Colombia, mm-hmm. but uh, you know Bogota, the pretty part. Yeah. Yeah. And it is actually it's up in the mountains. It's very pretty, but it's it's had it's been in the news. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, he was telling me, I said, you know what? I want to make a new soup. Can you what like what would you? And he goes, oh, you have to make this soup. And uh, I found out after doing some research, they have something like three hundred species of potatoes, and only one that they say is that. Yeah, I'm getting the nod. Augusto's giving it the yes. And uh, it has to be like that. And then I read one recipe that said, you know, you can use like russets, but it won't taste right. So you're going to, you know, go to the co op and ask for this one type of potato? <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to find them. Maybe you have to grow them. I've never, a specific potato. That'll be interesting on the balcony. Yeah, there you have it. My potato farm yeah, on the balcony. Yeah, just growing. Neighbors would love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not giving them potatoes. <laughs> These are heirloom seeds, buddy. Oh, my gosh. Special. I'll, I'll be there for the potato soup. Yeah, let me know. But, yeah, you got, I mean, you and I both love food. Yeah. And big on smoking. Yeah, I love it. And now I've got I've got three, four barbecues in the yard. Uh, but my favorite is the pit barrel that I got. And uh, the pit barrel is unique because literally it looks like an oil drum. And you, yep. hang, you hang the meat. And um, I just find my friends getting Traegers and spending... Two thousand dollars. I can't bring myself to because I'd feel I'd feel like a horrible person not babysitting. The whole point is that hands-on thing. Yeah. And I know if I got a Traeger, I'd love it, but I love that pit barrel holds the heat better than uh, my other smokers, and I'm still using hardwood. I'm still using yep. Kingsford coals, whatever I want, and it is fantastic. What we should do, and your sister lived next door to friends yeah. of mine. And uh, I had no idea until I went to their place for dinner. Yeah. And she was there. Except she looks just like me, but she's a, a woman. Last time I checked. But she's better looking than you. Yeah, well, there's that. Sandy. She's, there's, there's, that's not but uh, so they have since moved out. Uh, I think technically, uh, Todd and Belinda's, you can stand on the porch and wave to people in Lethbridge. Oh, so <laughs> it's not that far. It just seems forever. But he has built a ginormous smoker. I've heard that. I've never seen it. And uh, I keep saying, uh, we got to smoke something in that thing. And uh, I get invited to dinner, but I, yeah. I've never been invited to smoke something. To take in care it. of it yourself. Yeah. It's so much fun. My favorite, one of my favorite recipes to this day, and I don't know what it is because pork is the cheapest cut. Pork takes such great flavor for anything. Yep. I went and bought, uh, uh, which would have been $83 in, in beef the other day for nine bucks. These four great, you know. Pork, uh, you know, piece yeah. of fantastic. But the country ribs that, that you uh, showed me once, I think we may have done it on the air even, um, the country-style ribs that you did. Uh, we put some yeah. pineapple juice, I believe, some soy. Fantastic. Best way to marinate. You can't, you can't beat that flavor. So I'm a big fan of, of pork for the cost and the, the flavor. Because when, we when we were young, I'm not sure what it was like in the States, the way mom would cook the pork chop was it would be grayer than gray in so much gravy, and I appreciated the gravy, but chewy as hell, and yep. it does. And I, when I learned that pork didn't have to be that way, it was a whole new world for me. Yeah, no trichinosis since the early fifties. <laughs> I think we're okay. But everybody's still cooking the crap out of their coast pork. Coast is clear. <laughs> and there, there is some amazing pork grown in Alberta yeah. too. And there's, um, do you know prepacked meats? 
I've heard the name. I've never. You have to like a lot of meat. Is that right? At any given to time. Fortunately, you know, with the food place, I have opportunities. But they have something called karabi ribs, and it was they're unbelievable, and they're delicious. But I had a hard time selling them in the market because they didn't look right to people. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, and my favorite, I I did. Uh, barbecue pork belly sandwiches once Oof. and got one returned because it was too fatty. <laughs> well, you should have charged extra for that thing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I got to tell you, it's uh, pork belly. Yeah. Pig. Yeah. Pig going to be a little fat. Johnny. Where do you carry your fat? In your belly. Well, it, it, and I said to the guy, this is what they make bacon out of. Oh, that's bullshit. <laughs> no. Not going to no, win that way. Like one. you have no idea. Like pork belly is the best thing in the world. Well, in, in the country style rib doesn't, you know, look like a pretty picture until you cook, till you put it in your mouth. And you're like, this is fantastic. And it's got tons of meat on it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they're hard to find. Oh, yeah, they are hard to find. Seasonally, you can find them. I find them in some of the big supermarkets. But, uh, man, we talk food all you day. You probably get them cut. Yeah, probably. I yeah. mean, Crossroads has two or three butchers in there. One of them has got to be able to help get a poor guy out. Yeah, absolutely. I haven't been to Crossroads. My my, my uh, toddlers keep me running. I'm watching Treehouse or swim lessons. Why don't you do what Gary does? He he comes to, like, whenever he wants to get out of the house. I got to go see Jeb. And that's that's the appointment. You got appointment. Yeah. Well, after his birthday, he came by, and I I I said, you have to come by the market to get your birthday present. Yeah. And so a shepherd's pie. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, you should come by. You bring the by. kids. I will. Yeah, and it's uh, their attention spans thirty seconds, and they can run through the market, the flea market section. And actually, this is the thing that we're doing. This you're going to see this too late to come to it. We have a night market yeah, going yeah. on, which we're going to talk about on your show um, tomorrow morning. It's a little shorter segment than this. A while ago, yeah, we talked forever. <laughs> but um, uh, what are they? Uh, Cirque. Everybody tells me you're saying it wrong. Cirque de la, Cirque de la Nuit. Is that it? Nui, yeah. Nui I, night, I think. I'm, yeah, I believe I... En français? Knew it Something. is what I called it, N-U-I-T. I think that's it. I think you're saying that wrong. You're just telling me that that way because you're Canadian. I always, when, when news people read, uh, you know, I love it when the super anglophone will read the um, uh, headlines and they'll say, um, so and so, Jean Chrétien, and... Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, they have to say it like And, of course, uh, the other meeting involved, Yves, Yves Blanche. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. It's like just, Love it when they crank it up. Got angry. Oh yeah, you got to get angry. They always sound mad. Yeah. Oh man, do they do? They gotcha. sound really. I just I try to try my best. You just, if you say it quickly, you're gonna get away with a lot. Just speed through those names. Okay. I can. You know what? I can get by in Spanish. Yeah, I bet you. Yeah. Um, Growing up. Yeah, we have. Uh, yeah, Portuguese here, which I can't understand. Uh, it's more. You should listen. We'll get them to talk because okay. it's a little more sing songy. Okay. But uh, it is. I don't mean that rude. That's okay. It's beautiful. That's what it is. But yeah, it's it's less. Yeah. And it's more flow. Yeah. Anyway, um, French I cannot do. Yeah, it's. I took French, and obviously the same way that Spanish is taught in the states. Um, you know, I just I could not. I equated it to math. Like I had a real hard time until I went into meteorology, and then all of a sudden math came when I had a need for it. Right. Yeah. Um, but the French ouvre la fenêtre et ferme la porte. Um, you know, I don't understand people who got it. I don't. I personally don't know. And somebody's probably going to send a comment. You know, when they're watching this, saying, we "Well, don't I care. did grade seven to grade nine. I took French and I could speak it at you know, when I went into high school. I don't know who who does that unless you're immersed, unless it's your family." But. I had a neighbor in Canyon Meadows from I believe outside of Nice, and uh, he told me that uh, basically the Canadian French is like pig Latin. They say that, yeah, compared to France. Yeah. I went to uh, I was in Paris and I was trying to use some of my words and not so. They good. didn't quite understand exactly what I was saying. You want to hear the best? Is the Cajuns? Came out of Canada. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. Acadian. Acadian. Cajuns. Cajun. And they, uh, I mean, I know when I'm down there, they're speaking English to me, but <laughs> that is not, it's certainly not the Queen's English. And that's, <laughs> that's some good, we don't have, I'm not sure if you were around when they had the bayou here in town. The bayou was a, yep. a Cajun. That was the best uh, uh, Cajun restaurant. Uh, Louisiana food you could get yeah. in Calgary. They're crawdaddies. And, yeah, so I don't think that the, the Bulgarians need it. I think that, you know, a Cajun restaurant, a real good one here. I would, you know what, I'd, I'll do some Cajun stuff every once in a while. And uh, people, I do a pretty wicked gumbo. Okay. 
Fuck. And I have to, I, I have told people, I'm going to serve you the gumbo and you can come back and pay me if you like it. Yeah. Because uh, they're like, well, I don't know. You know, it's like, it's a stew. It's chicken yeah. and sausage. And, you know, sometimes there's a seafood one. Some, some you know. Yeah. Some big prawns is big. I, I, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what the roux would be in that, but that's what the, the bayou had just like the, the, the greatest bases of these things. And the odd pull boy sandwich, which is, again, that's kind of the, the token item, but a good jambalaya. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, uh, that roux is a difficult thing that's to thing. do yeah, properly. Yeah, I can taste it. I used to put pick a pepper sauce in. I'm not sure if that's correct. but Well, and I got uh, filet for the for the gumbo for my next door neighbor, Captain Spice. And uh, you should have named it Captain Spice. I'm going to tell him that. <laughs> I thought that's what it was called. No, no, no. A spice merchant. Oh, okay. But uh, Captain Spice is a better name. Or how about Old Spice? Maybe used, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'll get sued, but uh, that's what you get at Bulk Barn. But Captain <laughs> is old spice. The um, uh, this guy called me, and he goes, um, he says, "You got filet gumbo?" I said, "Yeah, but I can tell by your accent, you're not going to like my filet gumbo." And he goes, "Is is the sauce black?" And I said, "No." You didn't do your roux right. No, I know I didn't do the roux the way you wanted, but you were obviously Cajun. <laughs> so just have your mama make it for you and like, we'll don't, call it a don't day. come and yell at me. Yeah, um, you just make stew. <laughs> you don't make a gumbo. The phone calls you're But taking. the filet, like, and Stefan has this filet powder that you should, you'll have to pick up sometime. Uh, you're assuming I know what I'm doing. I just love, I have too many spices and too many condiments, my wife tells me. It's that is not, not true. Stuff. Your wife is wrong. Well, you know, that's what I think. And I uh, have to clean it out. And yeah, some of them are seven years old, but I might need that one at some point. My, yeah, my, that's the thing, though. You're better off to buy less and have it be and, fresh. And there, yeah, yeah see, here, here. Uh, the one I always keep on is um, Old Bay. I can't get enough Old Bay on everything. And uh, Really? Yeah, it's old. It's hard to find. Uh, you can get, if you can get it uh, you know, in the big container, I'll refill that and go Old Bay nonstop. Paul Perdome. Yeah, yeah. The, the, seafood. Yeah. That, it's His, a competition. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe came first. And there's another one in no, the No, Old Bay's been around Has for been around? a million years. There's a competitor, because I dig deep into rabbit holes for things, and there's a competitor to Old Bay that I haven't been able to find in Canada. I'll have to look it up and send it to you, but it looks like Old Bay, and they said, well, this one came, which came first, the, the Old Bay or Oh, the, the big argument. But yeah, a real good, you know, the simplified uh, version is a, a great piece of thick, like French uh, bread, toasted perfectly with real butter, and then the Old Bay seasoning. Oh, that really? It really throws people for a loop, and you can have that as a savory with a you know, chicken wing dish or whatever have you, and with Nashville wings if you do them properly. you know. My, uh, properly? Well, you know what I <laughs> That's mean. That's how we all think. Well, like, no, because no, Nashville... That it, between, no, it, it is. The Nashville spice, and it, we were talking about this on the program, is everybody's got a chicken sandwich. Everybody's got a spicy or a Nashville chicken sandwich. Yeah. Oh, my God. If, if you had it's the, the proper stuff, yeah. Hot word. Yeah. Yeah, properly. Well, I'll, eat, I'll eat what you put in front of me. <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, man. Well, I got to let you go at some point. You got to be up at what, 312? What did yeah. you say, 314? Yeah, you know, the first alarm is uh, honestly set at 313, the next one at 318. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I wear the Fitbit, uh, you know, not, not to capture my marathons, uh, but because it shakes and wakes me up. It doesn't wake up the whole family. And so you should go well, through this good. one, and then the phone goes off, you know. And, you know what? I found the key when I was doing. A similar shift, although I didn't. I like I can wake up. I can tell myself what time to wake up. Uh, that is a that is a, a real gift. Because I'm an idiot. But um, I had a coffee machine with an with an alarm on it, and it would it actually would grind the beans, drop them in, and make my coffee. That sounds fantastic. And that's the grinder woke me up, and it was uh, yeah, it's pretty loud. <laughs> But uh, it was in a totally different room. So you got to get your ass out of it. Yeah. Yeah, you have to, You got to get up. Your coffee's yeah. ready. And if nothing else, the smell of the coffee. Oh, yeah. You what know? if they make those still? That sounds fantastic. Christmas is coming. Yeah. Yeah. It's that or, you know what? Get a replacement hot dog cooker because that one won't last forever hot at the rate steamer. you use it. I love a good hot dog steamer. Yeah. All right. Christmas gift ideas. You know what? Thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me. I for appreciate coming it. here. We'll, we'll hear. Yeah. Oh, Regent. We got two meters between us.
Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're touching, but, you know, yeah. really all hand sanitizer does is eat your hands a lot. Well, look at your hands. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Soap and water. That does it, eh? Yeah, absolutely. I've never used so much hand t- uh, sanitizer. My, my kids call it hanitizer. Hanitizer. <laughs> I know so much hanitizer in my life. And my poor wife girl, is, Hannah. My wife has always used it, and then I got on board, and I'm like, I, I use it now. In and out of the car at work, we got the you know you do. Yeah, I've had a sore throat. It's once. become a, reto- a requirement. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, I've never been less ill or had a, you know, even a tickle in the throat in two years, so I can keep that up. Finally, live to be a hundred like I've wanted. Yeah, you know what? When I took really bad care of myself, I never got sick. Uh, that is crazy. I get all cleaned up, and I'm sick all the time. <laughs> I don't know. There's no bonuses to this. You don't have the medicine anymore. <laughs> yeah, QR, 77 in the morning, 6... 5.30 to 9. 5.30 to 9. With Mornings you with and Sue, Sue and Andy, yep. Yeah. And Thank Sue, you. who we have already told you is an absolute treat of she's a human a being. Yeah. She is. She's great. She, honestly, she's the easiest person in the world to work with. Oh, present company excluded. I would, I think people would beg to differ yeah. that I was just easy nice. to work with. Just being nice. Yeah, Super. you were. I was difficult, but I'm a perfectionist. There you have it. Absolutely. All right. Andy Schultz, thanks so much. Thank and thanks again to Liz at the camera store. Once again, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Watch and listen to us on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcast. And uh, Like a pro. Thanks again. Thank you, sir. We'll see you soon.